100 years before the concept of intersectionality was first introduced to the world by Professor Kimberly W. Crenshaw, activist Frances Ellen Watkins Harper asked Americans to consider the unique challenges faced by Black women. Born in Baltimore in 1825, Watkins Harper was raised by her aunt and uncle in a thriving free Black community. She attended the Academy for Negro Youth, a school run by her uncle, until she was 13. She grew up in a world where most Black Americans were enslaved against their wills, and women had no rights as citizens, forcing them to rely on their male relatives to provide legal and financial support. But Watkins Harper had a talent. She was a gifted writer. She published her first short stories in Black journals when she was just 14. By the time she'd reached her 20s, Watkins Harper had earned a reputation as a leading abolitionist. In 1853, she began touring the country, giving talks for the American Anti-Slavery Society. After slavery was finally abolished in 1865, Watkins Harper dedicated herself to other causes, including equal rights for Black Americans and women's suffrage. During a groundbreaking speech at the National Women's Rights Convention, she spoke passionately about the oppression she faced as both a Black person and a woman, arguing that she would not be truly equal until both of her identities were treated with respect. She inspired the attendees to start a new group dedicated to promoting Black and women's rights. Unfortunately, the unity she inspired did not last. Some suffragists, like Susan B. Anthony, opposed the 15th Amendment because it would grant the right to vote to Black men, but not women. Watkins Harper supported the 15th Amendment because she believed it was an important step on the road to universal suffrage. When the women's suffrage movement continued to fracture along race lines, Watkins Harper co-founded the National Association for Colored Women to give Black women a space to share their views and advocate for change. How do intersecting identities shape people's experiences in the United States today? 